what we're looking at here is the larynx. This is a model of the larynx. This is the hyoid bone right here. This structure right here is the epiglottis. This structure right here is the thyroid cartilage, and this is the laryngeal prominence right here. More prominent in males than it is females. Males have more testosterone, so the cartilage grows bigger, making this protrude more in the neck, the anterior neck. But this is thyroid cartilage right here. This is the cricoid cartilage down here. And then the trachea is going to be down here. Okay. Now there would be some membranes here connecting these two structures. The thyrohyoid membrane would be located here. The cricothyroid membrane would be right here. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is turn this to the other side so that we can see the structures in the back. Now, here we can see the posterior aspect of the hyoid bone. Right? Here we can see thyroid cartilage and cricoid cartilage. And notice the cricoid cartilage is larger on the posterior than it is on the anterior. Here we can see the trachea down here. And notice we've got this void here where the cartilage rings are not complete. Right? They're actually C-shaped cartilage rings in the trachea. Here we have the arytenoid cartilages. The arytenoid cartilages are kind of triangular shaped and they sit on top of the cricoid cartilage. Okay. These arytenoid cartilages we're going to see are where the vocal cords attach. Okay. These would be corniculate cartilages up on top of the arytenoid cartilages. These little corniculate cartilages to me, look like little pieces of corn. So that's how I remember them. If we look inside here, we can see the hyoid bone up here. Okay, we've got the greater cornu and the lesser cornu and the body of the hyoid bone here. This is the epiglottis right here. And we can see the top of the corniculate cartilages and the arytenoid cartilages. Okay. Here you can see the arytenoid cartilages have the vocal cords attached and these are membranes that fold over the vocal cords. So we call those vocal folds oftentimes. Now if we were to pull on the string right here we would be able to move the arytenoid cartilages and we've got muscles that do that for us. But we would be able to move the arytenoid cartilages and you can see how they would act to open and close the vocal folds. Okay? Now there's a hole inside here called the glottis and that's the hole that leads into the trachea. Now this glottis is protected by the epiglottis right here. This epiglottis is going to deflect food away from the glottis so that food does not end up in the respiratory system. It'll bypass it and go into the esophagus back here. What's often taught is that the epiglottis just flops over the glottis to protect it. However, it's a little more complicated than that. The epiglottis will invert or move into a more horizontal position when we swallow. This happens as the tongue pushes food backward into the pharynx. What's often overlooked is the fact that the larynx elevates to help further facilitate the closure of the glottis. Have you ever watched someone swallow? Watch as their larynx elevates. This helps to approximate the glottis with the inverting epiglottis, so the closure of the glottis is more effective. If you found this video helpful, click like and consider subscribing to my channel. Don't forget to visit www.humanbodyhelp.com.